I am Pastor Chasen Bynum from Champions House in Egg Harbor City, New Jersey, and welcome to Jews Life. Um, I'd like to thank Pastor Gina and JR for inviting me to share with you guys, to share with a beautiful audience. I've been watching. It's been great. Um, it's been encouraging to me every morning, so I hope that you are encouraged the same um, as you're watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that internet stuff that we tell you to do. It's important so that you can keep up with uh, what's going on here. I think this is a really encouraging and great kind of series that she has going on. Um, so I want to, I'm, <clears throat> we're reading from uh, mornings with the Holy Spirit, a devotional, daily devotional. Um, I have the pleasure of doing March 11th. Uh, I'm going to just read from it really quick, <clears throat> and then I'm going to share some things that the Lord gave to me about it. Uh, so it says, Father always has something bigger and better in mind if you will walk toward what he loves, even if that means walking away from what you think you love. Amen. Uh, here's a promise. You'll discover that you love what he loves far more than you love what you walked away from. I know it to be true. Uh, so love what he loves and hate what he hates. <clears throat> you will find yourself in the center of his will with his promises fulfilled. You can't possibly imagine the good things he has planned for you. And you don't have to only believe they will come to pass. A Amen. Thanks, Jennifer LeClaire. Um, so one of the first scriptures that came up here, I was really excited. Two of the scriptures that were on here were kind of like life scriptures for me, ones that I just love. And I believe they uh, just speak of the Lord's impossible nature. That's what I like to call it. Like he's the God of the impossible. And these scriptures kind of speak to it. So I really love them. Uh, first of them is uh, Psalm 9710. Psalm 9710. By the way, I'm wearing my reborn shirt. I felt impressed to, to wear that today. So whatever that means to you, let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Uh, stay reborn. Amen. Uh, that's who we are as believers. We're reborn. We're new. We're new. Not conformed to this world. Amen. We'll get into it. All right. Uh, Psalms 9710. All that talk should have gotten you. Time to get there. Uh, let those who love the Lord hate evil. Let those who love the Lord hate evil, for he guards the lives of his faithful ones and he delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Amen. So that that um, pattern that we see there, hating what the Lord loves, loving what the Lord loves, uh, there's deliverance in that pattern. Amen to deliverance. Somebody say deliverance. Amen. Um, the Lord Explorer does that. So, um, yeah, so there's deliverance in that pattern, which is a beautiful thing, meaning hating what he lo hates, loving what he loves. It says it'll lead to deliverance, that he will deliver them out of the hand of the wicked. Um, let's go to Proverbs 6, 16. Um, let's see here. Uh oh, somebody's at my door. Let me pause this. OK, I'm back. Sorry about that. At least you know it's real life. It's really my house and I'm not in the studio. Um, all right. So uh, that gave me enough time as well to get to Proverbs 16. I'm sorry, 616. Um, and I just wanted to highlight some of the things that God hates. Right. Um, this world is full of crazy, crazy, crazy things. Right. And um, if we have scripture telling us to hate what God hates and love what God loves, it's important to know what he hates. Right. And the scripture is also full of stuff that he loves. Um, but I felt it was important to highlight some of the things because it's, I find that it's things that we're participating in nowadays, things that the Lord hates. Um, and I wanted to highlight some of those things so it can just be kind of a check for us. Like the, the word is literally a mirror. Right. So this is going to be a mirror for us. I want you to envision maybe your favorite reality show or, you know, social media or anything that you're engaging in, whether it just be in politics or anything. Right. And I want you to line up those beliefs and those partnerships because they truly are partnerships, um, you know, coming into agreement with watching different things that are against. Uh, God's thoughts and against his desire for you um, or things that he just dislikes or hates, right? Um, you're coming to a, into agreement with those things. So I want us to know what we're coming into agreement with. So I want you to picture whatever that thing is, that thing that you love. I can't get away from this show. This show is so entertaining. Da, 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 da. And I want us to hold it up to the mirror of the word. Amen. So it reads, <clears throat> here are six things God hates and one more uh, that he loathes. Oh, 
Wrong translation. Amen. These are six things that the Lord hates. Uh, seven that are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. Um, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that make haste to run to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies, and one who sows discord amongst brothers. How many know that all these things, like, 90% of them is like 90% of the reality shows that we watch or that are so entertaining to us, right? Um, that should tell us something. It is that deep. Some people, you know, tell me, oh, it's too deep, you know, like, it ain't that serious. It is. If God hates it, you should hate it. You know, um, half the shows are about people lying to each other. That's entertaining to us. People um, backbiting and people sowing discord, uh, devising wicked plans for each other. Um, and things like, and even in our political arena, you know, uh, a lot of us have signed covenant with, uh, the shedding of innocent blood, the shedding of innocent blood, which is abortion and things like that. So I know I'm coming down some of y'all street, but it's all right. Um, amen. Because the word is a mirror. Um, and we're going to learn what the opposite of that is. This word is kind of broken up into two parts that the Lord, I, I saw two parts in it. So this is kind of part one. We just want to uh, highlight what are those things that God hates and detests um, so that we can stay away from them? because the world is this. I'm going to go to this. It's Second Timothy uh, 3 1. This is where the world is right now. And that's why I think it's important to highlight it because we're seeing it and it's it's so everywhere. Um, and we need to be able to uh, put ourselves on the right side of this and live there. Right. Um, because we want deliverance. Right. And that comes with hating what God hates and love. What you get it already. All right. Cool. Um, OK, so Second uh, Timothy uh, three, one. It says, but understand this, that in the in the last days, there will come times of difficulty for people will be lovers of themselves, uh, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient. I ain't never seen them. That this many disobedient kids. It's just not a thing. We get hemmed up back in the day, but I don't know if you can hem the kids up now. Um, but you know, this is what you get. Whatever. Um, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, ungrateful, uh, holy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, uh, without self control, brutal, not loving God, not not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit. Uh, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power. Avoid such people. All right. And if you are such people, um, I, I, fix it, <laughs> fix it. Let the Lord fix it. Um, <clears throat> we'll get we'll get into to a little bit of the, the, the second half of it later. Um, just don't be such people. Don't be such people. <clears throat> if any of those things stuck out to you, um, it's a very important checkup, those scriptures. Um, I find these are scriptures that we can examine ourselves with, examine our hearts with. Search me out, Lord. That, those type of scriptures. That's so, so, so important. Um, we don't want to ever get to the place uh, where uh, we're doing all the right Christian things, um, but we don't have the right heart behind it. And uh, our hearts and our minds are twisted, right? Um, the power, denying the power. I'm going to highlight later how that power is the Holy Spirit Den doing all these godly things. Um, uh, well, the first half is not godly, but it says doing godly things, but denying the power, um, denying the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the evidence of him is the change, right? The change that's in your life. Um, wanting what God wants, not wanting what God doesn't want, things like that. Um, that's the evidence of the Holy Spirit. We don't want to deny that in our lives. Uh, Roman 12, Romans 12, 12, 12, 2 says, I'm going to read it in two translations because I think it's good that way. It gives you more. Romans 12, 2. Okay. Uh, do not be conformed to this world. Amen. We do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, by the testing, by testing that by testing, I'm sorry, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So renewing your mind, a lot of us need to renew our minds, right? Um, and it says that uh, by testing, 
that we'll be able to discern the will of God and we'll be able to discern what's good, what he loves, what he doesn't. Right. Um, it's through the renewal of your mind, not being conformed to this world system. What they say is OK, what they say is good, what they say is passable, what they say, because that is ever changing. Like literally a year ago, somebody said something and they're picking it up and saying it's it's the worst thing ever. Let me just say this. Cancel culture is not biblical. It's not of God. Um, and uh, because the, the, the king, kingdom culture um, implies forgiveness, it implies restoration and all those things. So if you're subscribing to the cancel culture, um, I, I, I admonish you to uh, renew your mind, renew your mind, because uh, the same um, system that's being used to tear others down and destroy lives and erase people. Um, could be the same that you that you fall subject to. Um, should you not renew your mind? We don't have to live in that culture. It's not our culture. It's not the kingdom culture. Amen. Um, so this is getting into the second part of it. So the first part was hating what God hates, loving what God loves. Right. Second part of it is there, is the benefits of it. Um, actually, before we go to the second part, I want to read that in the message because it's really good. And OK. OK, so the message it says, so here's what I want you to do. God. Uh, God helping you take your everyday ordinary, uh, ordinary life, you're sleeping, you're eating, you're going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Remember, giving him those things that we love so dear and hold so dear. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture uh, that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out, readily, uh, readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. So we want to respond this morning to what God wants for us. Uh, unlike the culture, culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of uh, immaturity. God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. Amen. So the second part of this is the really exciting part is once you get all that stuff together, it says in Ephesians 3 20 now to him who is able, he's able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. That means all the things that we want so badly and we think um, are everything. God's saying I can do more. Right. But then even on another side of that um, is to begin to imagine with God, to begin to imagine the thing so that he can then top it. Right. Um, it says that he'll give you the desires of your heart. Um, and what I've learned, uh, the second side of that scripture, we kind of always think it's like, oh, he'll give me what I want, which is a degree of it. Right. But there's another degree where he will give you the desires of your heart. So the de desires you have in your heart, he can he gave you like I know that there's desires that he put in me that he's literally he's given me those desires. Um, <clears throat> so I want to encourage you guys to begin to imagine with God so that he can top it. Right. What's the most crazy thing that can happen in this circumstance? And just just dream with him a little bit and let him top that thing, because he says he can do immeasurably more than we can ask or even think. Right. Um, so go ahead and ask and imagine and think. Um, and so he can top it. Um, but it says that this is going to happen according to his power that is at work within us. What is that power? That power is the Holy Spirit at work in us. That power is the Holy Spirit. So it's according to the Holy Spirit um, that these things are going to happen. Um, just read. I won't go through that. Go go to uh, if, if, if that doesn't sink in with you, just Acts 1.8. It describes the Holy Spirit as being power that um, he will give us uh, the Holy Spirit and, and it will be power to us. Right. Um, so Acts 1, 8, read that. Um, so I'm going to go into the next one. It's first Corinthians 2, 9. And that reads, however, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. These are the exciting scriptures. These two that are like life scriptures for me. That's Ephesians and second Corinthians. So it says, however, I'm sorry, first Corinthians. However, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. So in some, in some respect, Look at some of the stuff that you you're into, the, the gifts that you have, the things that mean so much to you or um, the things you do or what you desire. Um, and it says that as much joy as that gives you 
And as as much as um, you like that thing, it's saying no eye has even seen, no ear has heard, no mind has even begun to conceive the things that God has prepared for you. So even that stuff that you have and that you think is so great, God's saying you you ain't even like you don't even got it yet. Like, you know, you no eye has even seen what I got planned for you. Like you haven't even started to think of it yet. Right. Doesn't say we can't think of it, but it's just like you ain't even start to think of all the things that I could do for you. Um, so give your gifts over to the Lord. Give him the things that you hold so so dearly. Um, I, I, I have. I'm a big proponent of that, you know, being somebody, you know, who the Lord has gifted. Um, and he's gifted all of us in different ways. Right. Um, but my gift kind of owned me for a while. And it was who I was. It was my identity. I didn't realize that my, my identity was just being a child of God first. Right. Um, and giving it back to him. I'm always a big proponent of that. Like, you know, I stopped doing what I was, I just, but by the leading of the Lord, just stopped doing all the things that I was doing. Stop using all my gifts. It just shut down, just shut down everything. Didn't do anything. And what happened was when he gave me those gifts back, he could then trust me with them. Right. And they were better and more amazing than I ever could imagine. Um, and they came with promise that I never even thought thought of, never heard of or anything, um, but they didn't own me anymore. He could trust me with them. They didn't dictate my life over the Holy Spirit's leading anymore. So I encourage you to give your visions, your dreams, your ideas, your gifts to the Lord so that he, he's a reproducing, multiplying kind of God so that he can multiply them and make them better than you could even imagine, immeasurable, make it something that you've never even seen or thought of before. Um, and he says in 10, if you go further in that verse, it says, but God, it says, well, let me read it again. Just so there's some connection. No, eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. Um, but God has revealed it to us by his spirit. Again, Holy Spirit. We need to honor and reverence and get real friendly with the Holy Spirit. He needs to be our best friend, right? Because he's revealing these things to us by his spirit. Um, and I think that was the last scripture that I have. So I hope that you guys are encouraged to, uh, begin to release stuff over to the Lord, uh, release those desires, um, things that are wrong desires. We do have wrong desires, um, so that he can purify them and make them holy, um, and give them back to you and that he will get glory out of those gifts and those desires in your heart. Um, so I want to pray this prayer that's written here over you guys. It says, give me prophetic perspective, God, so that I will see the way you do. I commit to following you wherever you lead me, no matter what you lead me away from. I want to walk in your perfect will and see your promises come to pass. So guide me, Holy Spirit. We love you, Holy Spirit. Guide us, lead us into all truth. Come with us and while we invite you into our day today to partner with us uh, in our days and reveal to us the partnerships that we've made with things that you do not like, that you hate, so that we may become out of covenant with those things and enter into a more holy covenant with you, God. We thank you for these things in Jesus' name. God bless you. This was great. Be reborn. Stay in your team. Stay on your squad. Uh, don't be conformed to the ways of this world. Stay reborn. Amen. Be new.